we're live. Welcome to the Cat and Sheila show, everyone. And third time's a charm. If you were with us at the first two attempts, now is when you breathe out. <laughs> if you've been holding your breath, you can breathe out now. Actually, we've been trying to perfect our show. And so our producer, Rachel, had us, you know, stop while she adjusted the sound. And uh, she has to know intro there that you probably saw. So we're going to go back now and we're going to complete our meditation to calm us down. So we have to stop giggling now. <laughs> this has been hysterical. Get your feet flat on the floor. Again, we're going to take three big deep breaths in. We're going to hold them for a few seconds each time. And we're going to imagine any negativity, negative thoughts, negative emotions, negativity that we don't even know we're carrying around with us. They're going to attach, attach them to that breath of life and we're going to blow it out across the room it's going to go right into the purple flame of saint germain where it's going to convert into positive energy we're not going to litter the universe with our negativity it's going to turn into golden light and we're going to return that beautiful clean golden light to the universe universe and then we can breathe it in again okay so we're going to do that three times all right close your eyes Center yourself. Now I want you to take a deep breath in and hold it as long as you can and blow it out across the room. And relax. Now take another deep breath in. As deep as you can, use your diaphragm. Fill your whole lung capacity up with fresh, golden, healing breath, breath of life. Now imagine any little particles like pepper attaching themselves to that breath of life. Blow it out across the room and into the purple flame of St. Germain. All the way down. One more time. Deep breath in. Hold it for any stubborn little negativities. Blow it out across the room. Now I want you to imagine that you're holding your talisman. So for Sheila, she'll have her feather. I'm going to imagine my feather in my hand, which my spirit guides gave to me. Surround yourself with a round bubble of protective mirrored light imagine you're sitting inside that bubble of protection only that which is of the highest and best and brought by your spirit guides may enter through that bubble everything else is reflected back from whence it came we wish it so and therefore it is i look so forward to these shows i know uh, you too this is kind of our moment to Take those deep breaths and kind of push the restart button. Yes. I feel tingly all over. It just feels so good when we do that. You know, um, several years ago, I found a, uh, a post on Facebook that talked about 10 Zen things you should remember. Mm. And I thought I would share a couple of them today because it kind of goes with our our breath and our relaxation and what we're trying to achieve here. And one of the, uh, the, the number one thing on this list is to just do one thing at a time. And, you know, I can remember when multitasking was, lit. that was really cool. I mean, it was really cool to see how much you could get done in the day. And by the end of the day, we were so exhausted. It wasn't, it wasn't even funny. And, you know, to go from multitasking to bringing it into a simpler, more to one thing at a time, it really, it create, it created a smoother day a more peaceful day and a lot less mistakes were being made mm. because I was concentrating more on just what I'm doing. 
And I think by doing that, it also kind of brings the calm. It, it uh, creates a vibration within you that makes you feel like you're on target whenever you're working and not scattered with other things. And so uh, for several years now, I have attempted to just do one thing at a time, slow everything down and, and be more, more mindful. And the second one is do it slowly and deliberately. Because once you start rushing, that's when mistakes happen. If you're not being deliberate or intentional about what you're doing, uh, a lot of times just anything on the outside world can grab your attention and then you forget what you're doing. And especially with us doing working on these tech issues that we have and, and being with uh, all of our guests one after another, really, you know, bringing it back to this moment is what's going to make all of us, both of us, uh, better attentive with our guests on our shows. And I think that's, that's really important. And one of the, the third thing was to complete what you're doing. And I know that sometimes in a hectic world, you know, you'll get that phone call and you need to do this and you need to do that. Well, you know, maybe you don't need to do that. Maybe just completing what you're doing, you get a, a sense of completion. And I think that brings us back to our Zen is the feeling that we, that we worked hard and we stayed focused and we got our, uh, our project done or, or that moment is completed so that whenever you go into that next moment, you're clear. Because how many times have you brought what you've just previously done into this moment now? That's kind of cheating the moment because there could be so much to receive from that moment. But if you're still, you know, processing or thinking about <clears throat> the moment prior to that, it makes it a little more difficult. And um, and the, the other one that I really love is to put space between the things that we do. Okay. Just like I was talking whenever we are, we have our guests on our shows. Um, we want to be mindful and open to what our guest or the person that you're talking to, if you can stay open and in that moment with them, it's a more quality moment, <clears throat> but it's important to put a little space like our breathing, to take a couple of deep breaths before you do the next thing. Let go of that moment, take a breath, and bring it back to this moment and be clear on this moment. That's why we love doing this this particular show show so much because it is a clearing and it is a restart and... Um, and we get to <laughs> see each other. We get to play. <laughs> no, I agree with everything you said, um, especially, uh, you know, where don't multitask. It's really hard to multitask because what ends up happening is you are doing a lot of things poorly. Wow. <laughs> That's what it is. Wow. Instead of, um, you know, you're, you're getting stressed uh, you lose your train of thought, you know, where you're talking about number three, stay focused on what you're doing. Yeah. It's very hard to do that with multitasking unless you have notes written for yourself and you're checking notes off. But then that also brings up number two, which is, com you know, complete the task so you don't make mistakes. And that's what good is it if you've worked so hard, if all of your work is one big, you know, you've got to go through and make sure that everything you did is correct. Mm -hmm. and, and when you focus on just one thing and you complete that one thing, you feel success. You're reinforced for what you did and you know it's right and you know it's done and it doesn't matter if you don't have five other things that are incompleted but started. You have one thing done right. and that trumps everything else. That's right. Um, that's a funny word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, we can go for another four or five shows on that one. <laughs> that <we won't. laughs> We'd have to go back and do a meditation again. Okay, everybody, get your shoes off. <laughs> Let's ground. Oh, <laughs> get that feather and tickle yourself. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Yes, well, you know, I am uh, I am a an instructor of breath, and you, you and I both are very aware of the uh, healing effects of the calming effects of the breath and seriously to uh, uh, take a breath even before you take that next phone call, even before. And I mean, you know, you walk, you're in a room and the kids walk up and they need things. It's okay to take a breath before <laughs> you start doing and, and saying, because clearly the moment is about to get hectic and clearly, a good, healthy breath will bring oxygen to the brain, and perhaps it'll be able, you'll be able to respond in a more calm way than in that frantic, <laughs> frantic way. That, multitask, yeah. Yeah. That frantic multitask, but you're so right, Sheila. And, you know, we do that naturally, and then we train ourselves not to. Think about it. Whenever... There's an, a, an exasperating moment. What do you do? You go, right. and people go, don't take a deep breath at me. Actually, you need to. That's okay. really good. You're okay. bringing oxygen up to your brain on a, phys- on a physical level. You're bringing oxygen to your brain so that your brain works better. But on a spiritual level, you're pulling in the breath of life and you're energizing yourself. So, when, when you do that, if someone takes it personally, just smile at them and say, I'm grounding myself in order to better help you. That's right. That's right. Because what, we, you, what, we're, what we're doing by doing that is setting an example. And I would love for all of my kids and grandkids to be able to watch me physically take a breath, take a moment, take a pause before I react and um, there's nothing like the uh, the feeling of being a good example for those around you. Mm-hmm. That is the best help that you can be. Better than doing too much. <laughs> yeah, do more of that and less of that. Because you know how people say, oh, don't go getting huffy with me. Yeah, get huffy. It's good for you and it's good for them. And you're going to be more successful. So huffy is a good thing. You're bringing breath into your body so that you can deal with whatever it is you need to deal with. Even if it's just a huffy or a sigh of relief. You're blowing the breath out with the sigh. You're huffy. You're bringing it in to deal with whatever it is you need to deal with. And so don't we train our children to stand still, take a deep breath, and think about it again. So we're actually teaching them to be huffy. It's okay. That's right. One of the other things that uh, is has become really important to me is devote a, uh, a time just for sitting for doing nothing but sitting. And, you know, we're in one of those, uh, a rush, rush, you know, get your kids to the school, get them to lessons, get them to games. I mean, it's just like we're going, 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 going all the time. And I know when I'm helping my grandkids with their homework after school, we have sit and have a breathing exercise <laughs> before they get started. Because they've got the whole day with them. They're just like this, you know. And I'm like, okay, let's get through the homework, but let's breathe first. Let's clear the mind of all the day. <clears throat> These are my, you know, junior high and elementary school kids, you know, teaching them and and allowing them to sit in silence for a little while is, you know, another good thing. I'm seeing more and more parents getting the... uh the yoga classes on the TV for the kids, like mm-hmm. on the Wii or, you know, one of the game things. And when I see kids doing yoga, it just warms my heart because I know the benefits. 
and when uh, the, the life is just so hectic. I think that uh, having your kids do a little bit of yoga before they go to bed at night would make such a, a, a restful sleep. And it it's they're doing but they are doing something that's good and healthy for them. So I, I really do encourage and love seeing when parents will, uh, because they make, they have game, uh, videos and stuff that make it fun. And, uh, so I, I really do encourage that for not for just kids, but for all of us. Oh, I so agree. I mean, I, 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 you know, before yoga and before meditation, there was prayer. You know, and so you had grace at the table where everybody, you know, settled down, got into that quiet place within their heart and blessed the food, which we now know from some scientists that when you bless your food, you bless your water and then you consume it. It actually takes on new properties within your body and and they're extremely healing. Mm -hmm. So we can still accomplish the same thing using meditation, as you said, before meals, before bed, just grounding and coming down and focusing within so that we can do better Once we redistribute our focus, because my gosh, the world is one big multitask place now. You're, you're watching TV, you're on your computer, the phone is going, your cell phone's going. It's like you don't, I, 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 there are times where I say to myself, you know what? I need to go lock myself in the bedroom for a timeout. I want a timeout. You know, it used to be, it used to be a punishment. It's like, please, can I have a timeout? Go do something bad. Yeah. We, we want me to break so I can go in there. Oh, yeah. well, um, you know, the, the best thing that, uh, we can do, uh, Besides our breath is to smile. It's contagious. Smiles are contagious. It really is. And uh, even when when times are tough, I know energy wise, this last week or so has been a doozy. And I have spent every day for the last five days talking with my my empaths who are feeling everything. And you know, there's a chance that your kids very well could be empaths and are feeling the uh the collective energy feeling the the schumann spiking the feeling the earthquakes happening feeling the sadness of of tragedies right now and they don't even know that they're feeling it they're just not they're just feeling unbalanced and and a little um you know, a little on the edge or whatever, chances are your child is an empath. You or your child are an empath and you are feeling what's going out here and you you are trying to find a, a, a situation or a reason in your own life that you're feeling this way and really what you're feeling is the energies around you. And um, so if you're, I, I would suggest that anybody who's really, not sure what's going on, why you're feeling the way you're feeling, to start researching about empaths and what they're feeling. Um, I have a, an amazing network of empaths because when we start feeling energies, um, we uh, connect with each other and let each other know, yes, we're feeling these symptoms here. It's not you. It's the energies. Allow them to pass through. And when we know that these are energies on the outside of us that we're feeling and that it's not a personal thing that we're, we're dealing with, we then can let go of the fear that something is wrong and just allow it to pass through and know that it will, uh, you will adjust to that and it will pass and you're going to be okay. And, um, and uh you cut <laughs> we're okay you're back on i think we're okay we're still ironing some stuff out here but yes so i do encourage you to uh think about researching what impacts are what they are experiencing and see if maybe that is what maybe 
uh, you too may be experiencing. Mm, that's also true, Sheila. And it's amazing, but our our time is up for this show. Please join us again next Tuesday, same place, same time. We may have to do a couple of starts, and maybe we won't. But <laughs> <laughs> we're so glad you joined us. And I'm your host, Kat Cannabis, and your other host here is Sheila Berger. And uh, we look forward to connecting with you again next Tuesday to talk about more that's going on in the spiritual world. Until then, have a great week, everyone.